Hello and welcome to another QuickBooks tutorial with EC QuickBooks Training. In this lesson we're going to learn about sales transactions. Now in QuickBooks you can choose from three different sales forms to document what you sell and each form has its own strengths and limitations. So we're going to learn about the invoices, the sales receipts, and the statements. So let's get started. Now invoices can handle any billing tasks that you can think of, so they're the best choice if you have any doubts about which one to use. Now in the QuickBooks Premier and Enterprise Editions, QuickBooks includes one more type of sales form, which is the sales order form. In those editions, when you create a sales order for the product that a customer wants to buy, you can create an invoice for the items that are in stock and keep track of out of stock items that you'll need to send to your customer when a shipment arrives. Now we won't be talking about the sales order in this lesson but please visit our other lesson in regards to sales order. Let's talk about the sales receipts first. Now the sales receipt is the simplest form that QuickBooks offers and it's also the shortest path between making a sale and having money in the bank, at least in QuickBooks. But this form is suitable only if your customers pay the full amount at the time of the sale. For example, in a retail store, a restaurant, or beauty salon. Now, for us service companies, you can accumulate charges for time and billable expenses, which I will show you how to do in another video, and then add them to a sales receipt. But for products you sell, sales receipts handle only payments in full. Now, when you create a, a sales receipt in QuickBooks, QuickBooks automatically posts the money into an undeposited funds account, which is a holding account, but I want to change this. And in order to do so, I have to close all my windows. So I'm going to close the sales receipt, and I'm going to close my customer center. Then I'm going to go to Edit, and then Preferences. Then go to Payments, Company Preferences. Now we have some options here. By checking automatically apply payments, what this will do is QuickBooks will apply payments to open invoices that the client has and it will go from oldest one first. Automatically calculate payments. If you check this, QuickBooks will enter the invoice amount when you apply a payment. So this is the one we want to uncheck. Use undeposited funds as a default deposit to account. So we're going to uncheck this and we're going to click OK. And let's go back to our sales receipts and take a look at that. OK, here we go. So as you can see, now QuickBooks has this tab right here where it says Deposit To. And we can select which account we want to deposit the amount for the sales receipt. So let's install a sales receipt. I have a carpet installation service company, so I'm going to go and install the carpet and I'm going to enter a sales receipt for um, that installation because the customer is going to pay me the full amount. Um, so I'm going to enter the customer's name here. Now you can enter new customers. You can select from your list, first of all. You can select a, a, from your list, but if the customer is not there, you can type in their name. And then QuickBooks will ask you if you want to add it or set it up. I'm going to do a quick add. So it's going to add it into my customer list. And he's right there. Okay, I definitely want this to go into my checking account. And I'm going to select the item, Full Carpet Installation. And as you can notice, it's a group. So all the items or all the services for that item are in this group item. And there is a video um, that I did regarding group items. So my total is uh, 290. Now once the customer pays me and he, will, he paid me with the check, I can select check and the check number here. And then I can, um, if I wanted to put a a memo or a customer message, but I'm just going to save it. Yes. Okay, so now it is, it is saved and let's go into our customer center and look at that. There is the sales receipt for Mr. Jones. 
and we can go ahead and open it and see it. So that's how you created a sales receipt in um, QuickBooks. Now let's look how we would use statements to bill our customers. Let's get out of this sales receipt. Now suppose you're a lawyer and you spend 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there working on a client's legal problem over the course of a month. Then each time you do so, that's another charge to the client's account. So in QuickBooks, each of those charges is called a statement charge, which in order to get there, we go to New Transactions, Statement Charges. You can enter them individually or you can track your time and then bill it in an invoice. Now a lot of businesses often turn to statements when they charge the same amount each month, such as fixed monthly fees for internet service or full-time work as a contractor programmer. Let's see how we can enter the statement charges. If we go up here under customer, we can drop down to the customer that we want to charge. We can also create a new customer if it's not on our list. As you can see, it will bring up any transaction that is open. So let's go back to Mr. Jones and let's create a monthly charge for plumbing. So we'll type in the plumbing or the item, the quantity if we want to do it by hour, but since this is a fixed amount, we're just gonna type in the amount and it brings it over to the rate. And the due date is going to be September 1st. Now in order to delete a charge, we can go to edit and delete. If we need to edit the transaction, we can just click edit transaction. We can also enter time in, in billable uh, expenses from here. And if we go to quick report, it'll bring us to the customer report with all their sales. As you can see here is the sales receipt from Mr. Jones. So let's go and take a look at the statement. So let's go to customers and create statement. From this screen we can select to have multiple customer statements or all customers but in this case we want to show only one customer which is Mr. Jones. And if we want to uh, show the details of the items we can leave this marked or we can uncheck it if we don't um, or we can have the due dates on the transactions um, also printed on the statement. So let's take a look at what that the statement looks like. Let's preview it and here it is. Here is the statement for Mr. Jones. Now where statements really shine is summarizing a customer's account. Behind the scenes a statement adds up all the transactions that affect the customer's open balance over a period of time which includes statement charges, payments, and invoices. Now let's take a look at the invoice. Let's close out of the statement. Okay. Okay. So now invoices will accept any item that you have created in your items list. And you can create invoices from estimates, but we're not going to be looking at estimates in this lesson. Now up here, as you can see, there is no deposit to drop down because this is an invoice. We have to create a payment uh, for this invoice. Now the template, it's, there are several templates. Um, let's go ahead and use a fixed fee invoice. And we're going to select install carpet. And we're going to do 200. And we can put a PO number here if we um, if we need one. And let's do net 30. Okay, so it gives us the due date. And let's save this invoice. Do you want to record it now? Yes. And do we want to have the terms appear next time? Yes. It says job costing information. The job does not have estimates. Without an estimate, QuickBooks is not able to compare your estimate and actual cost for this job. Do you want to learn more about why estimates are important? Well, we have another video for that, so we're going to click no. Okay, let's go back into the invoice. On the right hand side, you'll be able to see some information for the customer. We can see the open balance and we can see recent transactions. 
we can see an invoice, a statement charge, and a sales receipt. Let's click on statement charge and this takes us to where we entered the statement charges. As you can see there is no sales receipt because statements only show what is open. So let's create a statement for Mr. Jones. And let's go here one customer, Mr. Jones, and let's preview the statement. And here it is. The two transactions that we created with no forwarding balance. Now if we want to remove these due dates here, we can do so by going back to the previous page and unchecking print due date on transactions. Let's click preview. And there it is, no due dates. This looks great. Now let's apply a payment to Mr. Jones. Let's close out a the statement and go back to the customer center. Now let's go to new receive payments and let's say that Mr. Jones paid us $250 of his balance. Okay, we'll put the date and we'll put uh, the reference. He paid us with the check so this turns into a check number. So we'll put um, okay and here is where we can select which bank account that we want to deposit into. So we'll click the checking account and as you can see QuickBooks automatically applies the $250. We have $200 here and $50 there and then it leaves us with an underpayment of $150. So let's save this and let's record. Yes. Now Mr. Jones only has a balance of 150. Let's go back to the statement and see if it's reflected. Let's go to create statement. Mr. Jones. Okay. Let's preview. Okay. And there it is. It does reflect the payments. This is how we work with sales transactions. Thank you for joining us here with EC QuickBooks Training and I hope to see you on our next tutorial. Thank you.